You did it, didn't you? You finally got yourself into a relationship. Okay, maybe it's not a relationship, but someone you've been consistently seeing. Is there a difference? I mean, y'all have been going on dates, but would you call them your partner or anything? Would you? Or maybe you do. Look, regardless, I'm proud of you. I mean, you took a complete stranger and turned them into someone close. That's a hell of a leap in my book anyway. Now this is part three of a video series on Ovid's art of love. The last two videos focused on finding someone to love and attracting that person. So if my whole intro here didn't apply to you, then go watch those two videos and get yourself a lover. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna assume you're seeing someone and you want to maintain that relationship. Maybe you've been watching one of those cheaters caught red-handed compilations and now you're worried your situation will fall apart. Or maybe you've been listening to too much Frank Ocean and you really, really like this person. Regardless of your reasons, you want to keep this train chugging along. And thankfully, Ovid has some advice on this too. My own personal advice is going to be kind of limited because I'm not really a relationship type person, but I'll do what I did in my other videos and keep Ovid in check from a moral perspective. So let's stop screwing around because I know you're a busy person and all and don't want your time wasted by a blue anteater looking person. Part one then is to take your time. To quote our Roman poet here, Trust me, love's pleasure's not to be hurried, but to be felt enticingly with lingering delays. So this can also apply to the attraction part, but also with relationships. You know, sometimes our mind gets in the goal mode. Like, okay, first I gotta get a date with them. Then I have to eventually sleep with them. Then I have to go on enough dates to call them my partner and be in a relationship. Then, after a good amount of time, I propose and we get married. And I don't know, this might work for some people, but it seems like this goal-oriented approach is always gonna be focused on the future rather than the present. You know, you should enjoy each other's company in the here and now. You often hear the phrase, I'm feeling rushed, or can we slow down? It's like going into an aquarium with a checklist of fish to see and rushing through instead of just spontaneously flowing through the whole thing. I mean, hey, I'm spending at least five minutes looking at the sharks. Counterpoint though, what if you're worried that your partner wants to go farther and you're too slow? Well, you know, go at your own pace and communicate that with them. A good hallmark of a relationship is good communication. I don't know how weird it is to talk about this sort of thing in a relationship, but it seems like a good idea to talk about expectations and what you all want currently and all that. People who actually do relationships, comment below, do you guys talk about pacing at all or is it kind of a behind the scenes sort of thing? So part two is to not mention their faults. To quote Ovid, Above all, beware of reproaching girls for their faults. It's useful to ignore so many things. Grow accustomed to what's called bad, you'll call it good. Time heals much. New love feels everything. So here I think Ovid is saying that you can think of the bad qualities of a person as good after a certain amount of time. Maybe because you love them so much. Like maybe you'll think of it more as a quirk that your partner is up to now rather than a fault of theirs. Is there a difference? I don't know. Me personally, I'm only going halfway with Ovid here. Should you be a dick and just hardcore critique your partner 24-7? Hell nah, that's toxic. You're just a bully at that point. However, and maybe it's just my lack of relationship experience talking, but shouldn't partners in a relationship work to help each other grow and that might mean recognizing faults? Like you don't gotta be a dick about it, like if they're lazy you don't have to be all like, hey, get your lazy ass off the couch motherfucker. You could be all like, hey, are you doing anything new with making music? I'd really love to see what you've been up to. In addition to this, there might be deal breakers. Like maybe your partner just won't stop this bad habit and it's really bothering you. Or your partner's doing something really horrendous like cheating on you. I don't think Ovid's advice should apply here. Like how the hell do you turn them cheating on you into a good thing? I don't know. But it's situations like these where yeah, you should probably have a sit down and lay those faults on the table because they're making you consider leaving them. Again, relationship people comment below, but it just seems like maybe a good halfway point sounds best. Don't be a bully about their faults, but encourage them to grow and be transparent if something they do is going or went too far. So part three is a bit weird, but it's to keep things secret. Venus above all orders you to be silent about her rights. I warn you, let no idle chatterers come near her. Through the mysteries of Venus are not buried in a box, nor echo in the wide air to the clash of symbols, but are busily enjoyed so, by us all. They still wish to be concealed among us. Now this I really have to defer to the relationship people out there, because I have no idea. I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of this info though. Like it's cool to get to know someone's partner and what they're into and all that, what's going on in their lives, that's fine. 
Maybe it's even kind of sus if you keep all that info about this person hidden. The whole, oh she goes to a different school situation. You know what I'm talking about. At the same time, I've had people just lay out their sex life on the table and made everyone uncomfortable. I remember it was my birthday dinner at this seafood place, which wasn't all bad. But me and my friends gathered around and one of our friends, who was going through a dry spell, just unleashed all this information about his last sexual experience. And everyone felt kind of uncomfortable. So from the perspective of the receiver of this info, I'd say be balanced. Don't go all NC-17, but basic info is cool, you know? Do the relationship people out there agree? Comment below and let us know. Now the next one is also kind of weird. I mean, I don't know, this video seems to have a lot more ambiguity than the first two for some reason. If you're enjoying the ride though, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It's free after all. So part four is to respect their freedom. Sounds good enough, but let's actually get into the quote and you'll see where my hesitations come from. If she flirts, endure it. If she writes, don't touch the wax. Let her come from where she wishes and go where she pleases too. This husbands allow their lawfully married wives. When you come, gentle sleep to play your part as well. I'm not perfect in this art, I confess. What can I do? I'm less than my own instructions. What, shall I let some man signal openly to my girl and bear it and not show anger if I wish? I remember her husband kissed her. I grieved at the kiss he gave her. My love's full of barbarities. Not a few times his fault has hurt me. He's wiser who's reconciled to other men's coming. But it was better to know nothing. Okay, let's get the easy part out of the way first. No, you shouldn't be controlling in a relationship. You know, constantly texting them where they are, who they're with, all that jazz. Like being in a relationship shouldn't prevent you from being a human being and interacting with others. But obviously this quote isn't just about talking with others. It's straight up talking about cheating. Now perhaps this is my ignorance speaking, but I believe this is why communication is key. We live in a time where open relationships and polyamorous relationships are becoming more prevalent. I'm even close with many people in these types of relationships. Perhaps then if you communicate at the beginning and establish the ground rules and boundaries, then screwing around with other people could be okay. In that case, Ovid would apply. However, if you guys communicate and settle on a monogamous closed relationship and your partner acts in the way described, then I think we got a problem. In fact, rereading the quote, Ovid's writing from the perspective of the outsider of the relationship, so don't do that either. I don't think I gotta go into why cheating is wrong and I don't wanna waste your time, so I'll just leave it at that. One last tip, cause I'm actually on spring break and I wanna chill out, you know? Drink some pina coladas, get caught in the rain, all that jazz. And the last point, Oh boy, is another ambiguous one. In fact, looking back, four out of five of these points are strongly ambiguous. So good luck out there if you're trying to maintain a relationship. But point five is a big one. You might already know what it is, but according to Ovid, you should stir jealousy. There are those who don't like being served with shy kindness, while love fades if there's no rival around. Generally, heads are swollen with success. It's not easy to be content with good times as a fire with little power, gradually consumed, hides away, ashes whitening on its surface. But the doused flame will flare with a pinch of sulfur, and the brightness that was there before returns. So when hearts are numbed by slack dullness and security, love is aroused by some sharp stimulus. I first encountered this whole question on OkCupid, where one of the profile questions asked if you think jealousy is healthy in a relationship. And this is all pretty anecdotal, but the profiles I came across seem to be split on the answer. And this seems to be a question you could only really answer if you've been in many relationships. So the following is gonna be full on talking out of my ass. So what does jealousy hope to inspire? Perhaps it reminds your partner of your value, so they don't feel like they're getting the short end of the stick. And through jealousy, this value is conveyed through other people giving attention. But it seems to me that there are multiple ways to get this effect some more moral than others. We all know about those toxic relationships where one partner constantly flirts with other people and it makes their partner feel bad. Sure, they're jealous, but it's in a way that hurts their feelings and this isn't very moral in my mind. So perhaps you can convey your value in other ways such as working on yourself, improving your aesthetic appeal, working on creative endeavors, just bettering yourself overall. Like when you put on that killer outfit for your partner, it reminds them of your value for them without hurting their feelings either. Maybe through self-improvement, you can achieve the same intended results of jealousy without being immoral. 
But hey, that's just my ignorant perspective. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And that's gonna do it for this video and this series on Ovid's Art of Love. It's been a hell of a journey, and I could have tackled something more philosophical and academic, but what can I say, I'm more interested in pragmatism and addressing current problems in our lives. And what more universal of an issue is there in our lives, but love. Hopefully you found these videos useful in some way to improve your love life, that's all I'm hoping for. And yes, I am planning a 1000 subscriber special, thank you so much by the way. Then, after that, I'm tackling a lesser-known work by Kierkegaard, but one that I consider to be one of his best. And it's accessible, so you won't get any of that sickness unto death bullshit if you decide to read it yourself. To get notified when those videos drop, be sure to subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And I wish you all a very beautiful rest of your lives, and a beautiful love life.